Use your mics. Get that in a minute. So we are recording now. We're live. I'm going to call the uh, February, aren't we? Um, mm -hmm. Meeting of the Wayne County Arts Authority Board to order. Um, Before we get going, though, we're doing this for the first time since the pandemic in our committee room. And so for people in the room here and also people that are on Zoom, uh, I kind of want to and I'll have commission staff go over kind of the ground rules, how we access stuff, how we should be using the mics. Um, I know downstairs right now the mics are always live so who on staff kind of wants to tell us how we uh what we need to do today in this new zoom environment with people remotely identify yourself well i was gonna yeah i'm tim clean i'm the vice chair uh we're gonna we're gonna do uh roll call and everything uh in a minute the formal agenda but let's just start first with everybody understanding what they need to do uh with the mics and you know how, how we do this now in this environment okay. you know? good morning everyone so if you can when it's, when it's your turn to speak if you hit the push button on the mic speak directly into the mic and speak clearly and audibly yeah and it's a little bit you might want to practice turning on and off the mic for a minute because sometimes people have trouble with that if they do it too long then they turn it on and turn it right back off uh, so okay and then um all right um so let's start on the agenda then let's do roll call i can do the roll call and we'll call on the secretary for rodale miller to do roll call please okay uh oh thank yeah, you yeah and turn your mic on yeah. we just went over that <laughs> all right um We'll start with Tim Colleen. I'm here. Maria Lambert. I got an excused absence from Ms. Lambert. Uh, I'm here. Renata Seals. Present. Uh, Betty Misaraka is not here. Lolita Haley. Present. Uh, Hubert Massey. Present. Don Lee Cotton. Present. Tanya Jenkins. Tanya Jenkins present on Zoom, Detroit, Michigan. Uh, uh, so we have a um, there are thank you and uh miss jenkins for you too um in this environment all these different rules around zooms and uh when you have public meetings uh the open meetings act will allow us to take your input into the meeting to but the open meetings act does not allow you to vote remotely i understand Okay, I just want I want the ground rules clear for everybody, right? And it's not just us, it's also the public that's watching them and listening in on the meeting so that they understand. Okay. Um, so we have a quorum. Uh, item two on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. If people would take a minute to review that and we'll take a motion. Not the minutes, but the agenda. Is there a motion on the agenda? Uh, moved by uh, uh, I always get on here last night. Uh, yeah, yeah, seals. I'm sorry. There's a few. Uh, Moved by member Seals to approve the agenda as written. Is there support? John Lee Cotton support. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And it's very good that people give their names when they do this. Makes the minutes a lot easier. Um, we have a motion and support. All in favor of the motion on the floor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions. OK. Next is the approval of the minutes. Uh, you got a copy today, unfortunately. Uh, 
when our December meeting got posted, the video got posted to our YouTube channel, but it didn't get posted to one or another to the Wayne County website. And so when our minute taker went to our Art Authority page on the website, she didn't see it. Uh, so we got her the meeting and she did the minutes. I think I received them yesterday and made copies for you today. So if people want to take a, mo a minute to look at the minutes from December 13th of 21, and then I'll take a motion. And I'll remind you, mic awareness, you might not want to leave your mic on if you're not speaking, so you don't get caught in one of those hot mic situations. John, we caught a motion to approve the minutes from December 13th. Thank you, uh, Ms. Cotton. Is there support for that motion? Member Massey supports. Thank you, Member Massey. We have a motion to approve the previous minutes. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Um, and for staff, we will take the changes in staff at the commission under uh, other matters at the end of the meeting, so everybody knows. It was, okay, moving on. Uh, item four, is the approval of what's called an RFQ, uh, request for quotes. Uh, under the Art Authority, Art Institute Authorities Act, we are obliged annually to hire an auditor that will do two things. One is look at the millage rate uh, as levied by the voters and then do the mathematics to make sure that we have collected the appropriate amount from taxpayers under that millage. They will then look at how much money is actually transferred to the DIA, less any of the expenses that this board has. Uh, and so this is a public check that the right amounts have been collected and and the right amount has been sent for. Uh, and so uh, it's one of the obligations under the law. I sent people the, uh, uh, the section, the appropriate section of the Art Institute Authority Act uh, that covers this. So uh, this is uh, also what the zoo authority does. So commission staff has a kind of a request for quotes that's gonna go out if we approve it. We're gonna give firms 30 days to respond to that. And then we're gonna see who responds and what the quotes are. And then this board can pick uh, one of the respondents, uh, but that will come in a future meeting. Uh, for right now, uh, again, in compliance with the law, uh, we need to get that request for quotes out there. And my understanding over at the zoo authority is it's like an eight, nine thousand dollar kind of a uh, kind of an audit. It's not huge. So that's what's before us now. Uh, discussion from board members. Um, who, who did the audit um, prior? Uh, nobody. And this is one of those items uh, that. Uh, this authority has been catching up on for the last year or so, right? We've got stuff properly posted out onto our website now uh, for the public to see our, you know, when we're meeting, what our minutes are, be able to participate by Zoom, all of that stuff. There were a few things that we were not doing as an authority, um, and, and now we are. This is the last one of those items to check off the list is to, because um, uh, I heard about this from staff. Um, you know, like, hey, hey, you guys. So, uh, so this will be the first one we do, but we need to do it annually. 
John Lee Cotton. So we've never had an audit before? No, not of this nature. Um, another question um, for the RQ, where is that posted? Is it posted through the county website? Is it, we have how to is speak that posted? I'm yeah. sorry. How is that RFQ posted? Is it posted through the county website or is it a separate? How is that posted, the RFQ? Yeah. Uh, does staff have a no. response for that? It will be going out through the regular, you know, all of the firms that are qualified. Uh, it will be publicly posted. And we also post it through, um, oh, what do you call that? Where the county. The county goes in, like with the state of Michigan or something, to put price to put quote. I, well, I think there's a new. I think it was BidNet is what it was called. BidNet before, and it goes through the procurement. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and BidNet has a much wider reach than just the county. So yes, this is, and this is getting more and more common all the time. I'm seeing it as a commissioner all the time that as we join these regional or even nationwide purchasing groups in order to decrease your cost. I'm seeing more and more of that. So, uh, yes. So one, another question, it says commission staff has worked up the RFQ and they're ready to send it out. Do we have a copy of that RFQ to even see what it looks like before we, we understand that it needs to be an RFQ, but I haven't received a copy of it. Yeah. Did that get? It's in, yes, it's in the package. package. That got included in the package. Can you put that up on the screen? You did receive it. And, and yeah, see, it's, it's just little things, not little things, but when you receive the official, and here comes Betty, um, when you receive the official notification of the meeting, you got two attachments. Now, this is the way we always do it for the commission. So it's this way too. You got one attachment that's just the agenda. And then you got a second attachment attachment that's the agenda and all of the paperwork. And I don't think people necessarily, because you open them both and you either oh, they're both the agenda. So no, it did come uh, and people should be uh, aware of that. Uh, so you have it up on the screen? Yes. Um, do we have copies here? Because everybody else is on the screen except us. I'm printing them off. You printed them off? Where are they? I'm printing them now. I'm, huh? I'm printing them now. I'm going to grab them for us. They're being printed now. Yeah. Okay. So everybody will have a copy in their hand in a minute. And I'm about ready as soon as she gets settled to turn the meeting back over to our chair. But uh, Ms. Haley? So, uh, question. You said how we do business. So that would be policy or required and staff shared with you what we hadn't been doing. So how do we see what that is with policy or required? Because I guess the required part is the statutes and the policy. The statute, policy. yeah. So where would that be so we don't run into that or we have no well, I, on or staff? I, I gave that to you uh, in the uh, uh, email that I sent out where I excerpted the Art Institute Authorities Act that a board shall obtain an annual audit of the authority and report the audit and auditing procedures in a manner provided for in the Uniform Budget and Counting Act. The audit shall be in, in accordance with generally accepted government auditing standards as promulgated by the but U.S. I'm, talking about the, I'm sorry, I'm not yeah. just specifically talking about the audit that we haven't been doing. Right. And other things, they discovered this, so this was something that we hadn't been doing and required right. to do, but you mentioned as we've been doing business, so yeah. policy is one thing and required to do that. I appreciate that that you shared that with us. But well, and, and I'll, just, my I'll just observe, too, that as a members of the public board, we're all equally responsible on this board. Uh, and uh, uh, and copies of the law were provided to everybody on here. But, but given this, and, and this is a little side thing for right now, I'm thinking that five, six or whatever months from now, uh, that uh, we actually bring somebody in to do a little board training on here's the law, here's all the things you're required of. Because we've had some moving around on the board, and I don't know if everybody, and it might be a good time just to do that. 
for the current board members uh, to go through all of the because when I went and looked on the website because I ha we have posted on the website what the state law is well that link got broken the tab the button to take you to the link has the appropriate number for the state law but when you hit it it goes nowhere so I've notified folks here that we need to reestablish that link but all of the appropriate paperwork is on our web page uh, that people can go back and look. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is a matter of uh, the state law. Um, one other question about the RQ. Um, it says that the commission staff, again, has worked it up and once the board approves, but once the commission um, approves the RFQ to be sent out, will we be notified individually as a board or should we be looking up to see when this goes before the commission? It's not gonna go before the commission. It only comes here. Oh, so. Um, yeah, because the commission attorney is familiar with uh, these RFQs and the one for the zoo authority. So uh, it, it's not a general practice. Like I'm not notified whenever the county sends out an RFQ or an RFP. Uh, we could notify folks uh, when this does get sent out, if that's the desire. I, I think it's necessary because if it's a 30 day period, yeah. um, I think it's important that we all know when that time starts. Okay. Um, when that clock starts ticking. So when that, when it is sent out and, and how, when is it, how, how, what is that process of when the RFQ goes to bid me? How does, what is the process? So well, if you don't mind asking for us, because I know that you work in procurement, so. No. Commissioner Colleen. One moment. Ms. Patton. Uh, Don Lee Patton, from my understanding, once we approve the RFQ, it goes through uh, Wayne County Procurement and it's put out on bid net, out to bid. And I guess you said there's a 30 day time you're giving them 30 days yeah, that's to respond what we... back. And based upon the requirements in the RFQ, they take, the bid, you know, whoever has the best bid and that would be the um, firm we would go with. And that would, that would be okay. no further, nothing else needed on our part. Okay. I just, um, for me, I would like to know when that time starts. Yeah, okay, we can do that. I just wanna know when it goes up. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. absolutely. And of course, Ms. Patton, it could be that we'll get three bids in this or we'll have to decide which one we wanna have. Yeah. Uh, we do have a hand from Commission Counsel Felicia Johnson. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, yes. Okay. Commission Counsel, do have some input here, please? Right, through the chair, um, this is Felicia Johnson, attorney for the County Commission. While I do not represent this board, uh, I am familiar with this process and I wanted to offer a few thoughts with regards to it. Um, so this particular request for quotes is something that's generally done um, and is common practice when you're looking for audits. Um, the way the zoo has set it up, they do not go out on bitnet. That's not to say that this body could not. Um, generally, this is done as a direct solicitation is my understanding to small audit firms who can handle this type of small work. Um, and then it would be directly sent to them, you would receive the proposals back. Now, if this body wants to go through BitNet, we would have to contact the procurement division. Again, because you're a separate legal entity, um, we have not done that at this point. Um, because you're separate, you're not required to go through the county's procurement process per se. So when, when Commissioner Colleen mentions that this was done by commission staff, it was done by commission staff because commission staff is the staff for this body. So we're trying to help facilitate the process to make sure you're in compliance with the law. Um, but this does not have to go out on BitNet. That was not our intent. But if that is the desire of the board, we can do so. Or again, this can be a direct solicitation, which is a common practice for audit um, audits. Thank you. Uh Thank you, Counselor. And Counselor, let me ask you, uh, uh, this is the process we use for the Detroit Zoo, right? That is direct solicitation of small firms. And I'm going I'm to wait, I'm going to wait for Pam to weigh in because her that office handles that, but that is my understanding. That is correct. Uh, 
Pam Lane, Chief of Staff for the Commission. Ms. Lane? That uh, is correct. That we go, we do direct solicitations for the zoo audit. Uh, that is correct. Has there ever been a problem with getting quotes that way? Ms. Lane? I am not aware of any problems in the past with obtaining quotes through that procedure. And do you have any idea how many firms that is that we send it out to? I believe there were eight to 10 on the list. Okay. All right, but board members, you've heard it. any other questions on this then, where it's gonna go out to? Again, I'm, I'm concerned if we continue to use the people that we've been using and pe other people don't know about it, they're not notified that bids are out there because it's a direct, we're, con we're contacting people directly. I think people just don't have the opportunity to make the bids. I'm not saying that I'm against the process because eight to 10 is a good significant number for people to be bidding. It's just, I wanted to express concern that if other people are not aware, then they don't have the opportunity to get their foot in the door with the bidding process. And if you never bid, how do you ever get to bid? Um, and I don't know, Ms. Lane, if this is you or if it's, uh, and Ms. Patton might know about this too, or if it's our attorney. Do you have something to share for the whole group, Ms. Patton? Yeah. Going back to my teacher. Yeah, I'm, being a, I'm a member of the, the yeah. Detroit Zoo Art Authority. Right. Um, I, I, I believe that soliciting or uh, direct solicitation to eight to 10 um, firms is a, a good way to go about this. We could still look at those firms. Even though if we decided to go on BidNet, who's, if you don't know about BidNet, that's still yeah. the same argument that um, Renata had. If you don't know, you don't know. And well, it's not for this board to put it out there right. for us to let everyone, you know, uh, an advertisement to say, hey, there's a bid up. So and I Ms. was- Ms. Cotton, you have to qualify to be to be on bid net right mm -hmm. as a mm -hmm. you and, and the same thing here in the county uh, we have a way of um, certifying businesses correct I and then those business. businesses receive yes correct. you do the RFPs and the RFQs yes so I don't think we're really missing anybody but if we think there are firms out there they better get qualified with the yeah. county because this that is the way it happens and seeing as though uh, you're saying we were behind on being audited yes. that process would take a longer time mm -hmm. as opposed to us going going ahead and soliciting to eight to ten yeah. mm -hmm. okay. further discussion on this item a question are they certified yearly Whoever, like you said, there's 89 people. If you on the list, if you get no, the list, so you get certified every year. We're talking about direct solicitation. I don't think that one. We got to be able to hear you, Miss Cotton. Um, I'm not quite familiar with how the direct solicitation goes yeah. to the firms, whether or not they have to be certified. Um, but when we put them out and they go to procurement, they do have to be certified. So that would be yeah. a question for. And, and how often does that? Do they have to be certified annually? I'm sorry to answer your question. <laughs> no, certifications are every uh, three years. Yeah. Okay, discussion. Uh, I don't believe we have a motion. Uh, I think an emotion would be appropriate at this time. Ms. Cotton? Don Lee Cotton. Oh, sorry. Don Lee Cotton. Oh, I'm yeah, yeah. Okay. They're tricky. Okay. There you go. Together. Okay. Don't be caught. I move to approve uh, the RFQ um, for the Art Authority audit. Okay. Is there a support for that? No. Did I hear support? Did I miss it? No. Okay. Go ahead. Is there support? I, I, say, I support that. And it's been seconded by Member Seals. Uh, before we go to a vote, one more time on discussion. Hearing no discussion, we will go to a vote. All in favor of the motion on the floor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, please say nay. Abstentions. Okay.
Uh, I'm going to turn the meeting over to our chair. Uh, good morning, Ms. Ms. Araka. Good morning. We've made it to item two on the agenda, and it's your, I'm sorry, number two. It is two. No, it is two. Or, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the new service agreement under uh, new business. That item is where we're at. I have my number differently. So item two, E2, new business item two, discussing a new service agreement. So I'll turn this over to our chair to conduct the uh, discussion on this. Good morning, one and all. I apologize for being late. My car got stuck in the garage and I couldn't get it out. So oh. I, oh, I apologize. Mm -hmm. um, now, moving ahead to new business. Uh, what new business do we have before us today? We did the uh, the RFQ, mm -hmm. so we are E2 under new business, the second, a discussion. The new service agreement. A discussion mm -hmm. of the new service okay, agreement. Thank you. Who is going to lead us in that discussion? Well, I'll just, I'll just start it quickly uh, and we can go from there. It's a discussion item. Um, when the voters approve a millage, uh, for 10 years. Uh, and actually there is no, if I remember the law correctly, there is no uh, legal responsibility for the DIA to have a service agreement with art authorities. That is not a requirement? No. It is not. So, but the DIA thought 12 years ago, 11 years ago, whatever, that given the public money, and I'm speaking on their behalf right now, but it's the way, uh, that we should have some sort of agreement and set aside some of this money for uh, some of the public, you know, like taking the school kids down and that kind of stuff. Again, that agreement is not, there. there's no obligation to have that agreement, uh, but to work with uh, community representatives and the public uh, dollars that are going in uh, the DIA went to the art authorities for that. Now those service agreements last for the life of the uh, millage. And that comes to an end September 30 this year. So that agreement will no longer be in existence as of September 30. Starting October 1 with the new millage. Oh man, somebody tell me I'm not doing this. Uh, with October 1 and the new millage, uh, if it's the desire of this board to have a new service agreement in place, then we should be starting the discussion now uh, because uh, we would want to approve a new service agreement before October 1. Uh, and so we will have two meetings. Uh, one a little, uh, what do we got? A May meeting, I believe. And then we will have an August meeting. And the August meeting is usually you know, when we have to levy the tax annually. <laughs> and the August meeting would be a good time to be looking at approving a new service agreement. So, uh, so for our discussion item today, uh, it's how does this board want to digest and uh, uh, discuss with the DIA what the terms of a new service agreement would be. Right. Well, I, for one, I'm in agreement with that. I think we should get that in order. So where do we start with this now? Should we start today? To oh, people it? are looking at me. Well, I think, Don, we thought, I'm sorry. Yeah. Can we be sent out a copy of our current service agreement? So that would be a start to see what are, where we are in our current service I, agreement. I hate to say it, Ms. Cotton, it's on the website, and I send you links to it all the time. <laughs> So yeah. So once well, a starting point would be to review our current that's correct service agreement, and then we could go from there. So right. we could everyone take a look at that and have our first discussion about it in May, and then if an ad hoc committee once needs to be formed going into August, that sounds like that would be a good plan. Okay, but I think people should be thinking about it. But uh, discussions have already started out in Macomb and Oakland, so I'd like the DIA to discuss what they've been doing. Uh, with those two art authorities, uh, also to help our thinking on about how we want to go about Thank this. You. I think that's a very good idea. Thank you. And the DI, and you all, the DIA does, <laughs> it does 
goodness gracious. The DIA does plan to continue to have a service agreement with Wayne County, correct? Yeah, our intention is to continue with the service agreement for the next 10 years. So just as a little bit of background, so Julia Lisa. McFarland, um, Detroit Institute of Arts. Um, <clears throat> we've started talking with Macomb. Uh, Macomb County decided they wanted to put together a small group. So it's um, as the chair of the Art Authority and one other member. Um, we have been meeting with them regularly just sort of going through one service agreement category at a time and discussing, you know, what we're doing currently and then talking about ideas that they'd like to make for any changes to that category. So uh, this week we're meeting with them to talk about the senior program and then community partnership programs and then we'll be done with those conversations. Um, we just met with Oakland County and we're having those kind of discussions with them as well. They don't have um, a, a format yet. Um, so those are just more casual conversations at this point. Um, our goal, we would really like to have a new agreement um, drafted by the end of June, because that would give us the opportunity to spend the next six months sort of making adjustments and any changes so that when we started for the calendar year 2023, we sort of like have our feet firmly on the ground. Um, I know uh, um, we, the, the current agreement from what we understand ends at the end of this calendar year. So we would be starting 2023 on whatever adjustments that we wanted to make. Um, yeah, that's my concern too, because it does say um, the new millage begins October 1st. It says 2020 on this um, paper, so we do need to make that correction for this yeah, year, yeah, yeah. 2022. I got all confused with my two O's and two O's. That's fine. It all should have said 2022. That's fine. Um, my concern is if worst case scenario, if agreements can't be met and no service agreement is made. Well, first of all, I have a question. Well, there's, there's, is there a possibility of different service agreements with each county, right? Am I correct in saying that? So, um, you know, based on what we did for the first, first agreement, there is a parity clause and that's written right into the agreement that, that there's parity across the three counties. Now, there is differences in commitment levels, but the services have traditionally been the same. So then my question at this point would be, as you're working on the service agreement, because there has to be a parity, as you stated, among the three counties, will you be meeting with the two to three people that you guys have selected, the chairs and the one other person or whomever you've selected from each county to come to this agreement or um, you're already saying that you would like to have this implemented by June, but if they're not talking to each other, then you're talking to one and then you're talking to the other and then talking to the other. How do you expect the parity among the three when everyone has different needs and they haven't met as of yet and it's already, we're going into March? So I, ideally we'd have something drafted by the end of June. And when I say drafted, like in general terms, I mean, it might not be fully executed at that point. That's our hope. I mean, we just, that's what we're hoping that we can get to. Right now with Macomb, these discussions are just us listening to their ideas and talking about what we've done over the past 10 years and thinking about what what they might wanna change. So there's no, no agreements. These are just conversations. And um, I mean, I think having this on your agenda is thinking about how does Wayne want to approach it. At some point, yes, I mean, to have parity, we'll have to have conversations. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, I just, uh, my name is Saul Salvador, I'm the director of the DIA and working with uh, Julie on, on this um, aspect of rethinking our service agreement. I, I like to say that Julie's done a phenomenal job so far. The only thing the DA has done is listen it. We have not really said anything. We're just taking notes. We meet with Macomb County. We have met 
with uh, Oakland County, but more uh, structure with Oakland County. And what uh, Julie McFarlane and her team has been doing is listening to them, taking notes. And we are hoping to do the same with you guys as well with this arts authority, see what you want and see how we can make it happen. So that's, that's what we've done. And, and obviously it's important as Julie McFarlane was mentioned that we have parity because, and, and there could be some individualities or specificity for each county, but we have a team that works in making these services and uh, uh, the more consistent the service are, are throughout the three counties, the more efficient, a better service we're gonna be providing. That's a general business concept. But, uh, that's what we're thinking. But, but as I said, we're just listening now. This is the only thing we've done and we are planning to do the same as well with you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes, I have a, I don't know how this would work, but. I would like to think about trying to get get the DIA with the other two boards for some meetings. So we're all all three boards. I'd like to see if we could put that together. Is that yeah. is that do we have to have a motion for that? No, Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, well, I want to correct uh, something. Uh, Macomb County picked their own people. DIA doesn't pick um, who they're going to deal with. So. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. Still the same situation. Still the well, same but that was though. that was something that was mentioned at the table okay. about the, the people the DIA picked, and that's not the case. Well, what I'm suggesting here, because I was aware uh, of Macomb and Oakland starting the process, I think it would be a good idea, Madam Chair, if we did designate a couple of people, and I think the chair would be one of them, and, and I would be looking at Ms. Cotton and her experience uh, to begin the discussion and to begin looking at ours. Also, if we designate a couple of people to have these discussions, then members of this board can feed back to you two when they read stuff and say, you know, in the old service agreement, say, hey, this is what I'd like. But I think that also opens up, and I don't think we need a motion for it, uh, Madam Chair, that now we have a couple, we would have a couple of people in Wayne a small group in Oakland McComb, and they can just meet with each other and compare notes. You know, one Zoom meeting. What are you thinking about in Oakland? What are you working on in McComb? What are we working on in Wayne? And uh, I think I think that meeting is necessary because the, the parity is important. Mm -hmm. We could cost the DIA a lot of money by having three distinctly different agreements, uh, and of course, it would cost the taxpayers too. So there has to be some parity. But I would suggest that's the way to go, um, that we designate a couple of people off of this board to start that process, have a place where our board members can feed into, and that that small group can meet with uh, the other art authorities regionally. That's my suggestion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yes, please. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, the DIA, DIA seems to be anxious to uh, hear from everybody and they want it to be equitable. I like the idea of all three having the opportunity to meet with the DIA, then that way we don't have to, when you come to the table, say, well, what did you talk about with them? What did you talk about with them? Because this is, you're trying to serve all three counties. Yep. And I just feel, I agree with what you said about two to three people and I liked your recommendation, but I think it saves time and it's more equitable and more efficient if all three people, because we're just having a discussion and the final discussion remains with the DIA, but at least we know what's going on in my opinion. The final decision rests with us. Okay, well. It rests with us. Well, they could, we could there's be no persuaded agreement. to agree with the best way to be served. I'm not saying I'm that, saying. but I just want board members to, right? Nothing happens with a service agreement until this board votes to have one. Right? I'm a pre-board though. I'm yeah, yeah. pre pre uh, vote. Right. I'm just but I talking just... about that she already said that the timeline and expectation yeah. of finding out. And then we got to remember, this is a new day. Everything yeah. that happened with the COVID and we, now yeah. we're trying to catch up. This is our first board meeting. So now that you're going to yeah. pick people, 
why wouldn't it be no. easier? It's just a recommendation or a thought. Yeah. That's all. Well, I, but uh, I, I make the point because in the end, we're in charge. It's not that the DIA does this or the DIA does that. They can't do anything without this board. So I want this board to be aware, right? That we have the final say so on these things. So it is our, it's not that the DIA can force anything on us. But I do think two things from what you're saying. One is I would like to see separate from the DIA, the Wayne Oakland and Macomb Art Authority boards have their little groups Get, at least get together somehow and discuss what they're going to do without the DIA in the room, right? And then as we go down the line, and maybe we have a better idea and the other authorities have a better idea, then I think it's easier for the DIA to meet with all three groups at once, you know, to kind of get this cohesiveness uh, is the way I'm seeing it. But, you know, I, I always react that way, Ms. Haley, uh, on a board. We, we have to remember what our authority is. It's not somebody else's, right? Nobody's gonna say, nobody's gonna force anything on this board. In the end, nothing happens until this board votes. So we, in the end, we have, you might call the hammer on this. So I agree with you. Go ahead. My point was only at the point of discussion, not in yeah, terms yeah. of power. Yeah, yeah, that's all. but it allows for both. That's all. It allows for both, it allows for the authorities just to talk among themselves and then a larger group for the DIA to talk to all three authorities at once. I agree with the recommendation, Chum. So just to clarify, you would like, and if the board is okay with that, Betty, Ms. Rock and myself to review the current agreement, talk amongst ourselves and um, at some point be connected with some of the other county within the next 30 days or so just kind of get a glimpse of what their agreement is, what it is they're doing, and then we can get with the DIA all together. And, and I would, Madam saying? Chair, uh, after this meeting, uh, should we establish a little two-person committee? Yeah. It is up on the website, but separate from that, I'll send to all board members the current service agreement, including the two amendments to it. Yes which are all posted so that everybody has that in an email. Don't have to go chasing it down on the county website. We appreciate that. And uh, yeah, you ever try to find anything on the county website? Good luck. Um, mm -hmm. But, um, and, you know, and that'll be a starting point too. Uh, and then board members will know, okay, I can email uh, the chair and Ms. Patton, you know, my ideas and have that discussion. So we have a motion. Well, Tim said we didn't have to. Well, no, no, I'll, I'll make a motion that we establish a, a committee of two, uh, the chair of this board and board member Cotton uh, to act as an ad hoc committee uh, to begin the process, both with this board and with the DIA of discussing a new service agreement. Not only this board, but the boards in Oakland and Macomb too. Uh, so my motion is to establish an ad hoc committee uh, with Chair uh, Mizoraka and Board Member um, uh, Cotton to begin looking at the service agreement. Could I make a friendly amendment to that? We'll see how friendly it is. Uh, I'd like to have three instead of two on the committee, please. Would that be possible? That's up to the board. I'm okay with three people. Okay, so do we have a third? Oh, do we have a volunteer? Yeah. Absolutely, I would volunteer for that. Okay. All right, so we have, do we, so now it's on the floor. Is it the motion has to be adopted now, or is it already done? I will amend my motion to include three people uh, in addition to uh, Member Cotton and Chair Mizoraka, that Member Seal to be added to that group. And that group of three will act as our intermediary. Is there a second to that motion? Second. No, we got it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. I don't know that Dawn should be the second because she's the, a member of the committee. Well, I, I, if, if you don't mind, I'll make the second. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, discussion oh, from Tanya Jenkins. On more committees, we can't. We do have Member Jenkins wants to. Yeah. 
Jenkins. Member Jenkins, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I've heard several names here. Can you repeat those names that are on this committee? Uh, Ms. Patton, um, myself, and those were the two now. And Ms. Sears. And Renata. And Renata. Okay. Motion by Thank so yeah, it would be uh, Seals, Patton, and Misaraka will be our group if we approve that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion approved. Okay, now what's next on the agenda? We next now if we we have. Suppose with the let's go back to that point where I said that I'd like to see all boards to get together. I don't mean we have to do it in the next two months, but I think we should plan toward that. Um, if we could see um, if there's any feasibility on this meeting, but I think I think it is because we all have the same and common goal is to help the DIA and to help the community or help the community and then the DIA and the children to come down to see it. So. Um, do we want that discussion to the next meeting? Or is it necessary there's other people, do other people for, feel? For the sake of time, Betty, I would think that you, you should set your first meeting fairly soon because it's already February. So you're looking for the first. Yeah, yeah, people, you gotta have mic awareness. We are a public board. We're meeting publicly. Is how members of the public can hear us. So. My when you time. start talking, hit your button. When you're done talking, hit it again. I think that that you can't wait until the next meeting. The next meeting is in May, and the uh, preliminary agreement um, they're looking for in June. So you should set up your first meeting promptly. I have a suggestion, Betty. Since the committee has um, been determined, right. we can. Uh, Tim's going to send us the agreement. Our, our starting point should be to review that agreement. And amongst the three of us, we could select a time to meet within the next 30 days to get the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. Once we've reviewed it, we can then contact um, Julie. And I'm sure Julie could let them set it up with the other mm -hmm. um, authorities to meet and get the discussion and the ball rolling. And then that way we can bring something back to the rest of the board Thank prior you. to our main meeting. Okay. Thank you very much for that information. I agree. Thank you. Yeah, because that's as a board member, that's going to be one of my questions when it comes to the service agreement comes back here for a vote. Hey, we had our ad hoc committee. Did you meet with Oakland and Macomb to find out what they're doing? So yeah, it's part of the part of the deal. Thank you. Okay. Okay, now to election of officers. Um we need to elect the chairperson again, the vice chair. Recording, set, recording, corresponding, secretary and treasurer. Now, can I, on the chairperson, the vice chairperson, recording secretary, and the corresponding secretary, are those corresponding secretary and treasurers one? No. 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 Okay. Okay. Currently, we have. I'm the chair. The vice chair is Tim Cooney. Tim yes. Cooney. The corresponding secretary is myself, Donald yep. And I'm recording. And and who is the treasurer? Uh, Maria. No, 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 Maria is not the treasurer. No. It is Lolita Haley. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And by the bylaws, we elect officers annually. We elect officers annually, and we elected officers last January. So, so here's our one year. Okay, so. Yes, well, yes. So how, how, how would you suggest that we proceed with this? Each individual or all together? Individual. All together. Okay. Okay, so do, so for the election of officers, do I have any, any motions from the floor? I'll make a motion. Hubert Massey. Hubert Massey is making a motion? To do what? Well, to keep all. Okay. To keep it as is. To keep it as is. Yes. 
We have a motion by Hubert Massey. I second that motion. Second by, Seals. second by who? Renata Seals. Renata Seals. To keep the election of officers as they are currently? Correct. Is there a second to that? Yeah, that was Ms. Seals. Ms. Seals seconded. All those in favor? Any discussion? Aye. Any discussion? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion carried. Do we have such other matters as they may be properly submitted before the committee? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, we do receive some support, as we have discussed here, from the commission staff. Uh, and actually, I just was sent a list of uh, who we're sending the RFQ out to. That list is actually put together by the uh, Auditor General uh, that puts that list together. So, uh, but uh, a few members of staff are moving around. We've had uh, Dagnit Pangura offering support. People don't know Dagny right here, but we're changing some roles. So who's going to be uh, staff in the committee now from commission staff? Uh, if we can, is there anybody will, else? I will be Amina Spivey. Okay, so be Miss Spivey is the name you'll be seeing. Uh, just wanted everybody to know that. Welcome, uh, Amina. Yes. Thank you. Thank, thank you for that. I would like to put a note here that since they'll be working with us, I'd like for them to be included in any invitations that, to come to get the DIA to other things so that they get to know, see the whole picture. Um, I also have a comment on yes. such other matters. Um, it is, uh, as we're trying to work to get this board moving smoothly and making sure, just as Tim Colleen said earlier, things that we weren't doing that we should be doing. I would ask that the DIA to, um, I ask that the DIA properly send emails to our president, any correspondence requests, um, requests for meetings, things like that, to our um, chair and to our corresponding secretary, and that would be Dawn Lee Cotton and that then it is CC to whomever they're addressing. Because oftentimes we are not aware of things that are going on on the board because correspondence just goes back to, you know, people have personal relationships and things like that. But I think it's very important that we, we have a chain of commands here. We do have a board here. And I ask that we all, not just the DIA, but we all on this board respect what that is, and that is to go to Betty Mizaraka and our correspondent secretary and CC whoever it, its relations to as relations to. Thank you very much. I, I found some old newspapers and I kept them. 1965, 5.2 million wing to push growth of Art Institute. So back in the 60s, that's 40, 60 years ago, they were still trying to help the DIA and we were carrying on that job now for the, for the people that live in. So I want to submit this to the Art Institute for oh. your yes. archives. So archives. So I just wanted to say that the DIA is a very important, not only for the people that live here, but from all over the world. Because when I was on the, I had a little sore throat, so you had to excuse me and I just getting over COVID. So, but anyway, when I was working with the G7 conference, <coughs> when it was here in Detroit in the 60s, and I was in charge of the German delegation. We went to the DIA and the German delegation was just wowed at the DIA. And then when everything that we've ever done went politically, uh, or you'd go to the DIA. Not, it was not a social place. It was a, it was a place where people knew had power and it felt powerful to be there. And it was uplifting. So the DIA is a very, it's known all over the world. So we are here to keep it going and to keep it the way it is and to put hands and let's keep it that way. Okay. <laughs> I didn't hear that. What did she say? Say amen. Amen. Yeah. Uh, before we go to public comment, Madam Chair, uh, our next meeting is Monday, May 16th. At 10 a.m., and with the changes to the Open Meetings Act, we'll be back in this room. And I believe at that meeting, 
uh, the DIA will have a what do you call your report on that day? The half year report or something? Uh, that'll be yeah. That'll be a year end for yeah. 2021. So <laughs> that'll be one of the items, and I'm sure we'll be discussing uh, at that meeting also a little bit about what we're learning about the service. Rate. I would also like to thank all the, the ladies from the county for being active with us and helping us. Thank you very much. Love you. Love you. Okay, any other comment? Is there a motion to? No, no, we got to go to. I want to say thank you. You are always answer the phone. That's important. I appreciate you. Never, you just answer the phone and you respond. That's important. You never make it seem like it's not a big deal. Thank you. We've had uh, such other matters among the committee, Madam Chair, but now it's uh, the public comment. Right. Okay. And would staff again like to uh, go over the rules on the public comment? I'd like for the public to be able to say whatever that they choose, how long would it how long does it normally take? Depends on how lengthy you like it to be. Two or three minutes. Chair is general rule. But for everybody, I mean everybody, on it. Two or three minutes. No, for each individual. Thank you. You want two minutes? You want three? Two and three minutes. Okay. Three tasks. Public comment. Uh. Hi, are we open for public comments? Yeah, this is Steve Panson. I, I think you have to mute in your office. Is this what? He doesn't have to. Yeah, we. This is all so, um, yeah, I think that feedback is, um, you know, because we clear as a bell now, if you wouldn't mind starting <laughs> over. Okay, yeah. Um, so I'd like to comment on the service agreement, um, the discussion on the process, and obviously what we're talking about now is the process. Um, the Act 296 does defined benefits uh, that, um, that the DIA has to provide to the citizens of Wayne County, it's impossible for me to imagine how that would operate without a service agreement. So I think there has to be a service agreement. Um, the the pre-meeting between the three counties, that should absolutely take place without the DIA. Um, you're representing the people of Wayne County, Macomb and Oakland counties. Um, my major concern is what is the public input into the process for writing the service agreement that will effectively define the benefits that the people of Wayne County get from the DIA over the next 10 years and for which they'll pay $100 million. Um, and I, I just want to reiterate the comments that I made in the, the last meeting, which is, if you bring up service agreement, Art Institute Authority, people's eyes glaze over. But if you tell them that only 5% of the money that is transferred to the DIA is accounted for, 95% is spent entirely at the discretion of the DIA, people ears suddenly people suddenly jump into life so um one i think you absolutely need to get uh, public input into the service agreement two that public input has to be against the context of budget and real dollars and uh, my understanding is that's where macomb county is going they want greater transparency on the, um, the budget, um, the DIA has made an average of $50 million profit every year for the last five years. They made over $100 million profit in the last year. 
um, they have um, significant funds. It's time for the people of Wayne County to have an input into the agreement that defines the services and benefits that they will get in return. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Pinson, I'm not aware of all of that. Is, is the chair of this. Uh, is there a backup that you can prove that, what you're saying? Uh, With respect to what? To the table. Okay, I just was curious. So comment. Thank you for your comment, Mr. Pinson. Um, Madam Chair, yes, we do have some emails that were received. If there are no more comments on Zoom. Oh, um, hi. Yes, this is Halima Casells. I have a comment. Yes, please. Um, greetings to all of you, and um, a thank you for the work that you do on behalf of the people of Wayne County. Um, I also have concerns um, as a property owner, a mom, an artist, a cultural producer. Um, I would also like, you know, just to know what is, um, yeah, how is our money being spent? You know, um, our libraries have been gutted and the pandemic has been horrible to so many of our institutions um, and families and communities. And, you know, again, like, thanks everybody for showing up because it's been rough. Um, and also like that, that, that perseverance, that um, wanting to maintain those spaces that do mean so much to us um, and holding that at the center. Um, and also how can those institutions be better and what are the checks and balances and accountability? Yeah, like return on investment. Um, and so uh, I guess the nutshell of my comment is how can the concerns or the um, um, issues or the questions or the ideas of the public be a part of this process? Um, and I thank you for your consideration and time. Thank you. Any more comments on Zoom? If not, we do have some emails that we we'll receive. Okay, so the first email we received is from Ava Ansari, Alethea Carr, Amelia Duran, Benjamin Gatos, Nina Lauren, Billy Mark, Tanya Phillips, and Julia Yesvig. To whom it may concern, I am a Wayne County property owner, resident, parent, and arts and cultural center operator who cares deeply about the arts in the city. I just learned that the service agreement with the DIA will be renegotiated this year. I would like to be recorded that I strongly believe that the community needs to be directly involved in this <coughs> through participatory, uh, participatory budgeting. Can you explain what the plan is for public involvement in this process? I thank you for your time. Next comment is from Ramona Ewell, Kennedy, and Aaliyah Quick. Dear Wayne County Arts Institute Authority, as a citizen of Wayne County, I am inquiring about how to get involved in the process of the service agreement and negotiation with the DIA. I feel that it's important that we know how our money is being spent. Thank you. Next comment is from Melinda LaPerry. Public comment for the next Wayne County Art Institute Authority meeting. I am a Wayne County resident who cares deeply about government transparency and the arts and a longtime supporter of the DIA. I understand that the recent millage agreement renewal means that new service agreements with the DIA will be renegotiated this year. I'm inquiring as to how you plan to have meaningful community input through a, through a process of participatory budgeting. 
The public deserves the right to know and have input on how this money is being spent. One issue that is important to me is to include a provision that all DIA employees be paid a minimum of $15 per hour. Quality services are vital to the future of the organization. I appreciate your consideration, Melinda LaPerry, DIA member. Next comment is from Pamela Weinstein. To whom it may concern, I am a Wayne County property owner, resident, parent, and community activist who cares deeply about the arts. I just learned that the service agreement with the DIA will be renegotiated this year. The community needs to be directly involved in this process through participatory budgeting. I feel strongly that the new service agreement should require that everyone who works inside the DIA building should be paid a minimum of $15 an hour, employees and contractors, and that the local content be a priority. Can you explain what the plan is for public involvement in this process? I thank you for your time. Best regards, Pam Weinstein, Rosedale Block Captain Coordinator. Next comment is from Ivan Johnson. To whom it may concern, simply put, in today's world, a decent wage is the only way to pay bills and support a family. As prices and inflation go up, it is critical that salaries slash wages keep up. I support the $15 per hour wage as a minimum. Wages should go up from there no less than once a year. Thank you. Next comment is from Sarah Mark. Dear Wayne County Arts Institute Authority, I just heard that the service agreement for the DIA will be negotiated this year by your authority. As an artist and resident of Wayne County, I'm asking how can I give input and be involved in the process? Thank you for all you do and for keeping me informed, Sarah Mark. And this is the last comment. It's from Linda Cassell. To whom it may concern, I am a Wayne County resident who has lived in Detroit for 73 years. When I was a preteen, I participated in a sculpture class at the DIA. And years later, I continued to participate in workshops and curatorial classes. I deeply care Detroit and the Detroit Institute of Arts and I'm very concerned about the service agreement that will be re renegotiated this year. I strongly support a transparent process for public input and direct participation in this renegotiation process. I believe the process should be centered around participatory budgeting so that the public has a say in how their money is spent. Please explain what the plan is for community involvement in the process, in the current process. Thank you, Linda D. Cassells. That was the final comment. Is there anyone else on Zoom who would like to provide a comment at this time? Last call for public comments. Public comments have closed. Madam Chair, I move for adjournment. Support. Support. Aye. Aye. Thanks for all the public comment, you guys. That was great. Who was the second on the adjournment? Thank you. Yeah, we do. We have this. Chair. Uh, have you as a recording stuff? Okay.